September, the stretch run of the baseball season, known for celebration and heartbreak. Today I'll be going over some of the most epic collapses down the stretch in the wildcard era, or since 1995. And no, just qualifying for the wildcard game does not qualify as making the playoffs for the sake of this video. You have to make it to the divisional round. The ranking is based on how many games left there were, divided by the lead the team had. For example, if you have a two game lead with four games to go, four divided by two equals two, the smaller the number, the higher the ranking. Number 17, the 1997 Los Angeles Dodgers. This squad had spent most of September in first place in the NL West and had a two game lead with 11 games to go on the morning of Wednesday, September 17th. They traveled to San Francisco for a pivotal two game series against the Giants who were right behind them. Unfortunately, they lost both games. The following weekend, they were swept at home by the Rockies, a team out of the playoffs. Their five-game losing streak put their division hopes in serious jeopardy. Entering the final weekend, they found themselves two games out with three games to go, and the Giants ended up clinching the division on the second to last day of the season. Worst in 96 to first in 97. Do you believe in destiny? They do in San Francisco. Number 16, the 2003 Houston Astros. The Astros held a one-and-a-half game lead in the NL Central, eight games to go, on the morning of Sunday, September 21st. They proceeded to lose their next three games, but battled back to tie the Cubs entering the final three games. Unfortunately, they proceeded to lose two straight to the 68-94 and 94 Brewers, while the Cubs clinched the division with one game to spare. A 2-6 stretch in late September is what put their playoff hopes down the drain. Number 15, the 2005 Cleveland Indians. The Indians held a one and a half game lead in the AL wildcard standings with eight games to go on the morning of Sunday, September 25th. After a loss to the last place Royals, they lost two out of three to the last place Double Rays at home, meaning they were tied with the Red Sox entering the final weekend. They were swept by the White Sox, who had already clinched the division on Friday, and the Red Sox took 2 of 3 from the Yankees, and the Tribe were eliminated on the final day. They finished the season 1 and 6. Number 14, the 2004 Chicago Cubs. The Cubs had spent much of the summer battling for the top wildcard position with the Giants, and held a 1.5 game lead with 9 games left on the morning of Saturday, September 25th. They lost the remaining two games of their series to the sub-500 Mets, and then lost three of four at home to the sub-500 Reds. You know, I mentioned the Cubs collapse and continued today against the Reds. 1-1 game, Sammy looking for the grand slam. Instead, he is out at the Ivy. Still 1-1, now 2-2 in the 12th. And there goes the game winner, Cincinnati's Austin Kearns with a two-run home run. The Cubs lose again, so the Giants now lead the Cubs by a half a game. Struck out 16, and the Cubs One, two, still pitch. couldn't win. Adam and Dunn set a new single-season strikeout record. In the fourth inning, that's 190 this season, breaking a Barry Bonds record, and this broke the hearts of Cubs fans. Cincinnati's Javier Valentin with the RBI double in the 12th inning to break a one-all tie. Reds take three out of four from the Cubs. The Reds are toast. They have no reason to play. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. They're a game back to the Astros and Giants with three games left against the Braves. Entering the final weekend, they trailed both the Giants and the Astros by one game and were officially eliminated on the second to last day of the season after losing their first two games to the Braves. They went 1-7 in the same time frame which the Giants went 4-3 and three, and the Astros went 6-1. and one. Number 13, the 2010 San Diego Padres. The Padres spent most of the season in first place in the NL West, and on the morning of Thursday, August 26th, they had a six and a half game lead in the division with 34 games left and were first overall in the National League. What could possibly go wrong? A 
10 game losing streak. That's what. This included going 0-4 against the last place D-backs. From September 9th to 12th, they lost 3 out of 4 in a critical home series against the trailing Giants who had now tied them. During the final week of play, they found themselves half a game out of the division, but half a game up in the wild card. They proceeded to lose 3 of 4 at home to the sub-500 Cubs, and found themselves down by 3 games in the division with 3 games to go. After taking the first two from the Giants, the Padres lost game 162, meaning the Giants had won the division, and the Braves win earlier that day meant they lost out on the wild card as well. The Giants are champions in the National League West, and let the party begin! Overall, they went 14-23 and in their last 37 games. Number 12, the 2012 Chicago White Sox. The White Sox spent most of the summer leading the AL Central, and on the morning of Wednesday, September 19th, were up by three games over the Detroit Tigers with 15 games to go. They proceeded to lose two of the next three to the sub-500 Royals, then got swept by the Angels. They came home and lost two of three to the Indians, three of four to the Rays. They now trailed the division by three games with three games to go. The Tigers clinched the division with a win on the third to last game of the season. Uh, they went 4-11 in their last 15 games, while the Tigers went 10-5. The race is over, and the Tigers are once again champions of the... Number 11, the 2014 Oakland Athletics. They spent most of the season leading the AL West, but an August slump saw the Angels take over first place. Nevertheless, they still held a six-game lead for the first wildcard spot, with 30 games remaining. Unfortunately, their slump carried into September, and didn't clinch the second wildcard spot until the final day of the season, and they proceeded to blow a 7-3 eighth inning lead and a one-run lead in extras to the Royals in the wildcard game. They went 16-30 in their last 46 games. Number 10, the 2004 Oakland Athletics. Some double dipping here. The 2004 A's spent most of August and September leading the AL West. However, a 6-12 stretch from Labor Day weekend reduced their lead over the Angels from four games to two, entering a critical series in Anaheim. After winning the first game to establish a three-game lead with nine games to go, entering Saturday, September 25th, the Angels won the next two, and the A's could only manage a four-game split at home against the last place Mariners. They entered the final weekend tied with the Angels and hosted them for a three-game series. The Angels won game one 10-0 in Saturday's game 5-4, coming back from 4-2 down in the eighth inning. That win would seal the division title for the Halos and eliminate the A's. They went 2-7 from September 21st to 29th and 9-17 and from September 5th to October 2nd. Number 9, the 2008 New York Mets. The Mets spent most of late August and early September leading the NL East over the Phillies. The Phillies eventually overtook them, but the Mets still had a 2.5 game lead in the wild card over the Brewers with 7 games to go. After losing 2 of 3 to the sub-500 Braves, they split a 4-game series with the Cubs while the Brewers swept the Pirates, meaning the two teams were tied entering the final weekend. The Mets lost 2 of 3 at home to the Marlins, while the Brewers won 2 of 3 over the Cubs, meaning the Brewers got the top wildcard spot, while the Mets were eliminated. This was the second straight year that the Mets were eliminated from the playoffs on the final day of the season after they had blown a lead down the stretch. To deep left field, back goes Chavez looking up on the wall, and it's out of here. Back to back home runs for Helms and Ugla, and it's four. On the ground, a chance here. Durham to Hardy to first. It's the Brewers The Brewers yes. win. Yes. They guarantee at least a one day, one game playoff. Church. Hit in the air to center field. It's deep. Back goes Maven. He has room, and Maven makes the catch. And for the second straight season, the Mets' year ends in abject disappointment on the final day. The card, and the Mets are sent home by the Florida Marlins on the final Sunday for the second straight. Season. Number eight, the 1995 California Angels. 
the Angels spent most of the lockout shortened season in first place in the AL West, and they even had as much as a 10.5 game lead on the morning of Thursday, August 16th, with 41 games to play. They finished August 3-12 and, and had a 9-game losing streak from August 25th to September 3rd. Nevertheless, they still held a 6-game lead on the morning of Wednesday, September 13th, with 16 games to play. They went on another 9-game losing streak and trailed the division by 2 games with 4 games to play. After sweeping the A's, the Mariners could only split a 4-game series with the Rangers, so the Angels headed to the Kingdom for a 1-game playoff to decide the AL West champion. In a duel between Mark Langston and Randy Johnson, the Mariners pulled away in the 7th inning and the Mariners clinched their first ever playoff berth. Number 7, the 2011 Red Sox. The Red Sox spent most of the season battling for first place in the AL East with the Yankees. On the morning of Sunday, September 4th, the Red Sox held a 9-game lead in the AL wildcard race over the Rays and were only a half game behind the Yankees for the division lead, with 24 games remaining. The Red Sox would go 5-16 in their next 21 games, including 1-6 against the Chasing Rays. They also went 2-4 against the Blue Jays who were out of the picture and lost 3-4 at home to the last place Orioles. Johnson scores. Here comes Tian. The throw to the plate by Pedroia. Tian scores standing up. The High fly ball into left field. Back goes Crawford. Back to the warning track. He's looking up at the wall and it's off the top of the wall and gone. For ball four, here comes Desmond Jennings at first slide ahead of Lester. He scores on the wild pitch. It's 3-0 Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, Longoria at the plate. He goes the opposite way with a single to right field. RBI base hit, scoring Brandon Geyer. Raise on top. Pitch. Now Jennings can score on a pass ball. field in on the ball and nearly dropping it and dropping it is Reddick and here's Marcakis to score the ball sailed on him and he leaped up Reynolds again deals one one high fly ball left field back it goes near the monster and that ball is gone and we are tied Guerrero with two on oh one is a base hit to center field for Guerrero Hardy scores Marcakis being sent he's coming to the plate a huge base hit for Guerrero and the Entering the last three games, their lead in the wild card was down to one. And that one's going to be down the line. It's a fair ball. Guerrero. After splitting the first two games against the Orioles, the Red Sox and Rays entered the final regular season game, tied with the last playoff spot.
a game interrupted by a rain delay, the Red Sox led 3-2 going into the bottom of the ninth. Meanwhile, the Rays battled back from 7-0 down against the Yankees to force extras. With the three-run blast to cap a six-run inning, number 30 for Longoria, we get a ball game. It's again. Johnson hits it down the right field line. That ball's going to be fair and gone. And he lines a pinch hit home run. In Baltimore, one out away from winning. Loser Jonathan Papelbon allowed two doubles and a single, and the Red Sox lost. Moments later, the Rays beat the Yankees, ending the Red Sox season. Just minutes after the crowd finds out, Longoria strikes. Two -two. Number 6, the 2007 New York Mets. Ah, another team that appears twice on here. The Mets spent most of the season leading the NL East and held a 7 game lead in the division on the morning of Thursday, September 13th, with 17 games to go. It all started with getting swept at home by the chasing Phillies, then going 1 5 against the sub 500 Nationals. After losing a makeup game to the Cardinals, the Mets found themselves tied for the division entering the final weekend. The host of the last place Marlins. Not right now. And he lines one to deep right field. Back goes Green looking up and it's out of here. Jeremy Hermida off the wing of the scoreboard. A tremendous two-run homer. His 18th. Inside he hit him and that forces in a run. Three to one Florida. Oh. Wow. Base is loaded, two out. And a slider hit him, and it forces in another run. Can you believe this? The third hit batsman of the inning, the second one. On the ground toward the middle, Reyes can't get it, base hit. Ramirez scores, Ugla scores, six to three, Florida. Reyes tried to score. And after they and the Phillies both split their first two games. We'll go to second, turn their head for third. Millage makes the throw and it's cut off. That we played without the wild card. Rounded to the hole and a base hit and the Marlins take the early lead. Ugla comes in to score. It's an RBI single for Cabrera. And Ross lifts one to right. A long run for Millage over toward the line. He won't get there and it rolls all the way to the wall. Hermida will score. Cabrera is right on his heels and heading home. Castillo's throw. Castro can't handle it. Heading for third is Ross. Glavin makes the throw there and throws it into left field. Ross comes home to score, and it's 4 to nothing, Florida. Reached for and looped into shallow left for a base. And Trainer takes it off the plate. Ball four. Line the other way, a base hit. Jacobs goes to third, he'll be held up there, and the bases are loaded. 1-2 to Willis. Breaking oh, ball him. inside, and it hit him, and that forces in a run. Ripped down the left field line, that'll get at least two more runs home. Trainer scores, Deaza scores, Willis to third, he'll be held up there. It's a two-run double for Ugla. The Marlins have put up seven runs in the top of the first inning. The Marlins scored seven runs in the top of the first and route to an 8-1 win while the Phillies took care of business against the Nationals, so the Mets missed out on the playoffs. Number 5, the 2011 Atlanta Braves. The Braves spent all summer leading the NL wildcard race and held an 8.5 game lead with 25 games remaining on the morning of Saturday, September 3rd. Getting swept by the Phillies put the division out of reach. Hard over the back, down the right field line! Here comes Ibanez! It's a clean sweep for the Phillies! 
getting swept by the chasing Cardinals shrank the lead to four and a half games with 16 to go. Braves went 5-7 and seven in their next 12, all against sub-500 teams. Nevertheless, they still held a three-game lead with five games to go. This means they had a 96.7% chance of clinching a playoff spot. Even a two-game lead with four left meant they had a 91% chance, and a one-game lead with three games left meant they had a 77.3% chance. So even though they're slumping, they're still looking good. And even a one-game lead with two games to go, and they had an 81.25% chance. In the final series of the season, the Cardinals took two of three from the Astros while the Braves were swept at home by the Phillies. And the Braves were forced to watch the playoffs from their couches. They went 8-18 eight in their final 26 games, including a five-game losing streak to finish it off. ...comes in to score easily, and it's 3-3. The Phillies managed to come back with two out in the ninth inning. To the tenth we go. Michael Schwimmer on for the Phillies. Chipper Jones to center, and Michael Martinez is going to run this one down. That could have ended the game right then and there. Chipper went 0 for 5. Top 13, two men on for Hunter Pence. Pence breaks his bat, loops it over the head of Freeman. Uglas got it, and the Phillies take the lead. Unbelievable how that one fell in. 4-3 fills, bottom 13. David Herndon facing Freddie Freeman with one on and one out. Runner doesn't go. Ball's hit right to first. Mayberry's got it. Throws to second for one. Rollins is tossed in time. And the Phillies have now the franchise record and wins. And they end the Braves season. The Phillies take no prisoners and sweep the Braves. The St. Louis Cardinals. Number four, the 1999 Cincinnati Reds. This is an interesting one. Throughout September, the Mets led the NL wildcard, while the Reds were chasing them and the Astros for the NL Central. The Mets' seven-game losing streak put the Reds up by two and a half games in the wildcard, while also maintaining a one-game lead in the NL Central. Entering the final weekend, the Reds held a two-game lead in the wildcard and were tied with the Astros for a division lead. The Reds lost two of three to the sub-500 Brewers, while the Mets swept the Pirates. So they ended the season tied. Play. So John, I tell you what, I have to give the tip my hat to the Mets. When they lost on Thursday and went two down, two games down with three to play, and were able to come back to this point, you have to tip your hat and say they never quit. And they everything looked in the Reds' favor starting the weekend. They were going to Milwaukee, where Milwaukee had the worst home record in baseball, and the Reds had the best road record in baseball. They were looking at going there to you know, win a couple of ball games at least and throw up a title. Now they have to win one to be able to get back to Cincinnati tomorrow or whenever and play a one game playoff with the Mets. But again, you have to give the Mets a lot of credit because I mean, it looked like they were dead. But I've been also Bobby Valentine said, hey, we can make it. It's just going to be a little harder than we thought. And it was, and they came through. The Mets defeated the Reds in a one game playoff the following Monday. Center field going back in the ball. Still going back. Back to the wall, it's gone! And that one seemed to surprise Hammonds. He started to break back easily on it, thinking he had a play. But he did not. It was over the 404 foot marker. And the Mets have jumped ahead of Paris 2 0 after only two batters. She performance has ever seen in one of these. And it's caught by Alfonso in second base. And Al Leiter has completed a two game, a two hit shutout, and has put the Mets into the playoffs for the first time in 11 years. Number three, the 2012 Texas Rangers. After the Rangers blew the 2011 World Series, they led the AL West from the fourth game of the season onwards. After beating the A's in the first game of a four-game series, they held a five-game lead over them with nine to go. They lost the next two out of three, then lost two out of three to the Angels, which means they had a two-game lead over the A's with three to play. All they had to do was win one game out of a three-game series in Oakland. Two-one pitch, looped into left center field, and that 
That's a big set. Here comes Rosales. He's going to score. Coco to second, and he's got a double in the A's and the lead. Now a 3-2 been dealing to pinch hitter Brandon Moss. He lifts this to center. Josh Hamilton gloves it for out number two. Coco tags from third. He will slide in safely ahead of the throw on a close play. Sack fly for Moss. The A's increase their lead to 4-2. Parker still going strong. Swung on line to right base hit. That will score Donaldson. Moss to third. That's bobbled by Cruz. Moss to the plate. Going to try to score the throw. Not in time. And the A's have taken... And he hits one to deep left field. Hamilton going back to the track, right in front of the wall, and this one is gone! And Johnny Gumster runners on the corners, nobody out, and Seth Smith, the base hit to center. That'll play to run, make it 5-3, to three, and that was it for Dempster. He kicks and fires, and the pitch is lying down the right field side, heading toward the corner. Fair ball! It's right on the stripe of the 3.30 side. We are tied at 5. Coco stands at second base. He claps his hands. He gives the signs all over again. KGMZ. Get high in the air to center. Stays in the park for Hamilton, jogging in. Still coming, looking up at the bright sky. Drops it. He drops the baseball. Unbelievable. Chris is home. Drew is home. Cespedes is at second base. And the A's are back in front. KGMZ again. The A's load the bases with one out, and Brandon Moss comes through. The single to right center field. Nelson Cruz can't scoop it up. All three base runners score, and the A's blow it open. It's a 12-5 lead. So in the ninth, Grant Balfour. And the pitch to Michael Young is swung on a fly ball center field. That's going to do it. Coco is under a drifting back. He's there, and he's got it, and the A's have won the West. They got swept. As a result, they had to play in the wild card game, where they hosted the Orioles, but lost 5-1. to one. Anderson delivers. Murphy sends a fly ball toward left center. That should do it. McLeod is there. Under it now. Makes the catch. And for the Orioles... Number 2. The 2009 Detroit Tigers. The Tigers spent most of the season from May onwards in the division lead. Then their largest lead at 7 games on Monday, September 7th, 26 games to go. After that, they went on a stretch going 3-9, and nine, including going 1-5 and five against the last placed Royals. Bentcourt rounding third, they're going to score him, and the Royals have come right back and taken the lead, and Butler again. Driven deep in the air, down the left field line, way back to the corner, it goes, and it's gone. A two-out, two-run homer for Aaron Hill. Difficult for them. The Tigers go in there and win a couple. They're starting to run out of games, run out of time. That's drilled in the air to center. Granderson going back, still going back. Not going to get it over the wall and gone. It was laying on top of the wall and over for a three run shot for Miguel Oliva. And goes again, and the pitch popped up down the left field line. And if Kelly sees it, he'll catch it. I don't know, but he sees it. And now rolling to the corner. Span to third, he'll be held. And dumped down the left field line. It'll tie the game right on the heels of Span. Here comes Cabrera, and the Twins take the lead. But the huge... Line drive, fair ball. Sox take the lead and Beckham on his way to second base. So he drives in his 60th run of the year. With seven games left, their lead was just two games. In a critical four-game series against the Chasing Twins, they lost the first but won the next two to take a three-game lead with four games to go. This means their chance of winning the division was at 96.875%. The 2-2. Driven to the air toward left field, hit well, Guillen backing up, it's over his head and off the wall. Two runs will score and maybe three, Span rounding third, they'll send him home, and he scores. It's the Twins staved off to Levination on Thursday afternoon, uh, but their lead was still at two games with three games to go, and they're hosting the sub-500 White Sox. They still had a 93.7 chance of winning the division. They lost the first two, and the Twins won their first two games against the Royals. Both teams won on the final day, setting up a one-game playoff.
The game went to extra innings, and after both teams scored in the 10th, the Twins won it in the 12th, winning the AL Central. Now we're down to number one. The most epic collapse in the MLB in the wildcard era. It is the 2007 San Diego Padres. The Padres spent most of the year in second place in the NL West and led the wildcard race for all of September. With 10 games left, they held a two and a half game lead in the wildcard standings with the Rockies coming to town. The Red Hot Rockies swept them at Petco Park and the lead was down to just half a game. However, they rebounded, winning four of their next five and held a two-game lead in the wildcard standings with just two games to go. Two-game lead, two games to go, 96.875% chance of clinching a playoff spot. And that looked to be said and done on the second to last day of the season. The Padres led the Brewers 3-2 in the bottom of the ninth with two outs and a runner on second. And future Hall of Fame closer Trevor Hoffman on the mound and a 2-2 count to Tony Gwynn Jr son of Padres legend Tony Quinn, hit a game-tying triple. The Padres lost that game in extras and lost the following day. Meanwhile, the Rockies won their last two games, meaning a tiebreaker would be played at Coors Field. The Padres scored two in the top of the 13th to take an 8-6 lead. Trevor Hoffman came on for the safe opportunity. Tonight, to right field, Giles headed back. Giles at the track, he jumps and is unable to make the catch. Around from second base comes Tulowinski. He will tie the score at eight as the third goes Holiday with a triple that has tied the game at eight. In the he gave up two doubles and a triple, and just like that, Hoffman had blown another save. Jimmy Carroll hit a walk-off sacrifice fly to win it for the Rockies. What is the lesson learned from all of this? That no lead is safe. I'm looking at you A's, Cardinals, and Nationals. You may have a lead now, but based on these past results, I don't think your lead is necessarily safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section if you agree with my picks and if I described them well or if I should have ranked them differently and if there are any that I should have included or should not have included. I hope you have a great day. Up the middle, one nothing Giants!